For me, storytelling has always been the way to reach the heart. The stories that you can tell around the images, along with the images, make something very, very powerful. Science and technologies, especially satellite imagery, are absolutely essential because people's livelihoods, natural resources, and biodiversity are connected to each other. Satellite imagery are our eyes in the sky, providing those insights and up-to-date information. Going around the villages at the beginning of our Tukari program, helping the villagers understand the importance of conservation and what the deforestation was actually doing to harm them. I will never forget when Lilliet and I went to one of these villages and he'd acquired one of these huge satellite imagery maps and we laid it out and the villagers were sitting around it and their excitement was absolutely fantastic. And there was one woman saying, that's the tree where I put my baby when I'm working in the fields. And another man was saying, no, we can see our sacred sites, this tree and this rock. And I remember one woman and she said, well, I used to do my farming on this hillside and she pointed to it. And she said, but then all the trees went away and there was this terrible landslide which showed on the map you could see where the, the mud had slid down and there was no vegetation left on either side. So she said, now I understand. Now I know that it's worth walking a whole extra hour in the morning to get to a place where I can cultivate the land without causing this terrible destruction of the environment. Takale gives me hope. The way it gives me hope is it is changing lives. And it is also empowering the local voices. You find there are people, they call themselves like forest guardians, uh, friends of forest. There are people who are becoming, you know, um, tree planting groups. More than 80% of biodiversity are in the hands of indigenous people and local communities across the world. In Africa, on average, more than 65% land tenure is in the hands of local communities. So if we want to achieve conservation impact and address the climate change, we have to work with local communities and not only engage them, but empower them to own and drive decision-making in their landscapes. Well, the Kari approach began when I flew over the Gombe area. I flew over an area which in 1960 was part of the equatorial forest belt that stretched right across equatorial Africa to the west coast. By the late 80s I flew over in a small plane and I looked down and I saw a tiny island of forest. Gombe National Park is very small, surrounded by bare hills. As you know I spent many many years studying chimpanzees. When I began, there was probably between one and two, and I'd say closer to two million. And today, 100,000 to 300 and a bit thousand is all that's left. Many of them are in fragmented environments, isolated genetically, and have little chance of survival. So they are highly endangered. And if we don't take action, then they will become extinct. The NASA satellite data helped us understand what does it mean to be a chimp. It helped us understand where to protect them. NASA supports, launches, and maintains and manages constellation of different satellites. And some of them going all the way back to 1972. By providing this data, to the conservation community. It helps us continuously monitor the chimpanzee habitats. 
The chimpanzee habitat suitability model developed with support from NASA and University of Maryland includes more than a dozen variables directly extracted from Landsat satellite imagery. It includes NDVI, it includes percent tree canopy cover, it includes tree heights. Using conservation standards approach and dashboards, we take these models and turn them into habitat health indicators, into actionable information people on the ground can actually work with. And the conditions of the forest can change quite rapidly due to illegal logging, mining, or any other threats. So this information is updated in near real time so that conservation decision makers can see the individual threats affecting chimpanzee habitats from village to national scales and across the entire chimpanzee range in Africa. And this NASA data helps identify areas under threat of illegal logging or fire damage where local managers could be deployed to mitigate the threat. In addition, okay. mobile apps enable community members to become involved in not just tracking changes in the habitat, but to be active in enforcing the protection of the village forest reserves from degradation. Community leaders have even used this data to inform their village land use planning, voluntary moving farms away from areas where forest restoration would lead to the greatest gain for watersheds and people. It works both ways. Sometimes you show a lush forest and then you show how a few years later it's devastated. There's just a few burnt stumps. But on the other hand, there are other images which show you a devastated landscape. And then five years later, trees coming back, regeneration, new hope, new life. So the stories that you can tell around the images along with the images, make something very, very powerful. And you need both to make the kind of impact that we need to make today to help people understand the devastation we've caused, but to give them hope that we can turn things around. And that's what these satellite images show so clearly. I'm convinced that we have planted a seed that is going to spread and uh, this is the very good way of trying to ensure our contribution to the mother planet. My future is a future where technology is married to compassion and love.